Psalm 25, we pray. O oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced, but disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, O oh Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. Remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and unfailing love, which you have shown from long ages past. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love, for you are merciful, O Lord. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. When we fall and fail, when our sins prevail, when we stumble, Lord, we come to you for mercy. You're the only help we know. Your 
Yours the power, yours the glory, yours the grace. With our hands held out, often blinded by our doubt, needing healing, Lord, we come to you for mercy. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. 
He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 3 and 10 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the Lord brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. We rejoice for the abundant blessings you provide, and we place into your hands all that we have and who we are. We overflow in thankfulness and acknowledge you as the giver of things. Lord, have mercy. You hear us calling, you hear us calling. Abba Father. We pray your spirit to fill the hearts of unbelievers. There is no hope outside of that which you provide. We desire that hope for everyone. Use us as vessels to proclaim your name in this lost and broken world. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Gospel reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, and 19 to 31. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they'd been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you were here last week, you got some insight into John the Baptist. Today is going to be part two of my sermon series, a real mini sermon series, one or two weeks, uh, two weeks specifically, that I'm going to be preaching on John the Baptist. Last week, we learned that John was the proclaimer of a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Remember? And we took a look at three key words there that he proclaimed. In other words, he preached. He taught about a baptism, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we looked at the word baptism, and we said that means a washing, and it can be applied in a variety of ways. It can be by immersion, as some are baptized by immersion even to this day. 
Baptism can be by sprinkling or it can be by pouring. It doesn't matter. It's not defined in the Bible anywhere outside of saying it's baptism, which literally means a washing. Then we looked last week at the word metanoia, which is translated as repentance. And we said that that word meant a change of mind. And we said specifically when applied to Jesus Christ, it's a change of mind or change of attitude away from sin and toward God. So tonight, uh, this, this morning, I want to look at the second installment of, of this two-part series on John the Baptist, and I want to look at him as a witness. The term there actually out of Greek is translated often as the word martyr. The word is witness. It means that he made testimony toward those who came to him about Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We sang the words here just a little while ago with one accord where they talk about, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist was a witness in that regard, a martyr in that regard. We want to use as our tour guide John, the disciple of Jesus, who records some things about John the Baptist for us. John, the disciple of Jesus, was originally a disciple of John the Baptist. And later he followed after Jesus. And he writes with the full impact of he himself being an eyewitness or a martyr as well. John is an eyewitness to the events that are recorded for us in his gospel. How do we know that what he writes is true? And where do we find it? Some of you who are in my Thursday class are familiar with those questions, aren't you? I often ask you, that's a good point. Where do you find that in the Bible? And so I ask of you, where do you find that today? John's Gospel, the 21st chapter, he writes these words. This is the disciple. Now, he's writing about himself. This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things, and we know that his testimony is true. So let me encourage you today to take out your Bibles if you brought them with you. Take out your Bibles. Or if you have a Bible app on your cell phone or electronic device of some kind, take that out. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Find John's Gospel. And we're going to look at the very first chapter. Can you find it, Sandy? John's Gospel, the first chapter. We're going to look at that together. We're going to look at several verses today that testify that John the Baptist is a witness pointing to Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at John chapter 1, verses 6, 7, and 8 as our starting point. Before we jump into the text, I want to ask you if you can give me a definition of witness. What's a witness? Someone who's seen something. Yeah, if there's a car accident somewhere on Adams and 84th Street, perhaps there's someone around that saw that happen. It's a witness. Usually, we associate that with a court of law, don't we? Where you have a witness to testify what they know as what they saw, what they heard, and they give testimony to that. That's a witness. So that's what John the Baptist is. A little while ago when I was doing the Sunday morning class, I saw a picture in, in the uh, video that we were showing today, and uh, a perfect example of of John the Baptist as a witness. It was an old master who had drawn 
uh, and illustrated a scene in the life of Jesus where he's up on the cross. He's surrounded by family members, his mom and relatives. But then off to the side is John the Baptist. He's going like this. He's pointing to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who forgives the sins of the world. Not there yet, but in 6, 7, and 8 we read these words. There was a man commissioned. Some translations have sent. I just happen to like commissioned better. There was a man commissioned from God whose name was John. He came as a martyr, a witness, to bear witness about the light. And in my Bible, light's capitalized as a reference to Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to tell us why. Do you see it in the text? There was a man commissioned from God whose name was John. He came as a martyr to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. John's not doing any of this to receive credit for himself. He's the guy at the foot of the cross pointing to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We've got John's purpose, why God commissioned him in the first place, right there in this text, that all might believe through him. It's a simple project, really. John was to point everyone to Jesus. Then as now people meet, need more Jesus. Are you familiar with the advertisement on TV where there's a guy that's holding an arrow-shaped sign? You remember seeing it on TV? Think about that for a second. Then he flips it over and points the other direction. And then back this way. Sometimes he spins it around. Be watching for it. What he's doing is he's pointing the way. That's what John the Baptist was commissioned by God to do. Not only to point the way, but specifically the way of Jesus. Now, if you go down to verse 15, so John 1, 15, you see another example. John bore witness about him, Jesus, and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. Again, in that verse, we run across that word martyr in the original language, translated out of the Greek into English as witness. John is bold and unafraid in his witness. He witnesses, he points to Jesus. He humbly admits that he is not the Christ when he's asked about that. He's not the Christ. He's not Elijah the prophet. He is not the prophet. He is pointing his way with baptism, as Mark says it. The baptism of remittance, uh, excuse me, the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John was baptizing, and the religious leaders came to him, and John witnesses only to Christ. John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. So when someone asked John who he is, what's he do? points to Jesus. He points to Jesus. He's a martyr in the truest sense of the word. He is a witness. The same is true in these verses in Scripture. 
chapter 1, verses 29 through 34, where John witnesses to the mission of Christ, calling him the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And in John 1, 35 through 42, where John witnesses uh, using the same words, behold, the Lamb of God. In these verses, we learn that after John witnesses of Jesus, some of John the Baptist's disciples begin to leave him. John had disciples. Among them was John, who was first a disciple of John the Baptist and later became a disciple of Jesus. So John was called as a witness to Jesus Christ that others might believe. And look what's happening. John, for one, is now becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ, leaving one John for the other. Hope I haven't confused you too much. This is the tale of two Johns, John the Baptist and John, the writer of the gospel. He was commissioned by God to witness, to bear witness to the light, Jesus, that all might believe through him. John is carrying that out. John the Baptist is doing that, and John is believing that and is now following Jesus. This is John the Baptist, a man who shows up on the stage of God's divine drama for a time. I mean, if you read the, the encounter there in both in, uh, in Mark and then here in John's gospel, he's not there on the stage very long. And then he is martyred in the sense that you and I would know, and that's to be put to death for his faith. So here's a man who preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and then whose very life stood as a witness to point to Jesus Christ. Have you ever held a coppice in your hand? Ever held one? Have you ever noticed how the arrow always points to true north? It'll point to the north very easily. That's what John is doing. He's pointing the way to Jesus. So my question to you then today would be this. What about you? What about you? I mean, it's nice to sit here today. I enjoy it. I enjoy being in worship, but worship amounts to one hour, right? Some of you are in Bible studies and small groups and doing this and doing that. You're in the Word more often than just an hour, most of you, or you do home devotions. But what about you as a martyr? What about you as an eyewitness of Jesus Christ? Well, Pastor Gary, Jesus isn't walking on the earth anymore. I can't point to him. Yes, you can. How do you do that? You point to where he's found, right? You know where Christ is found, where the Holy Spirit says he is? He's in God's Word. That's why we read God's Word to you. We want you to hear it, that proclamation of, of Jesus as Lord and Savior. We want you to know that. We want that down in here so that it comes out here or it comes out in your actions. You can point people to God's Word, and you can easily point them to what God does in baptism what God does through the power of the Holy Spirit, through Holy Communion. Each of you here today has a story to tell, don't you? Some have been healed by cancer, from cancer. Some of you have been, you might have even been sick with COVID and been home for a while. Like my dad, who was diagnosed a week ago today, was placed in the hospital, taken by ambulance, in fact, to the hospital, and then brought to Lincoln. 
And by Wednesday, with the treatments he received, he was on the way home. A miracle. That's a story that I can share, that he can share, that gives glory to God. You have your own personal stories as well that you can tell people about how God has reached into your life and made a difference. That's what we share with people. We share by words and by actions. We are martyrs today in the truest sense of the word, eyewitnesses. And just like John, we stand at the foot of the cross. And we point to Jesus. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away sin. Behold the Lamb of God, the life and light of men. Behold the Lamb of God, who died and rose again. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. Broken heart, broken heart, fallen far, behold the sin. Receive the Lord's blessing. 
as you leave this place with an important message, the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please rise.